anyway, thank you all uh, for coming. Um, everybody uh, these days is more than incredibly busy. Uh, and so the idea that you'd take uh, two days out to, uh, to come to California uh, for an educational symposium uh, is really uh, tremendous. And I think for those of you who are also here for the CTUT meetings, uh, you know, it, it's uh, a special thing to sort of have everybody together uh, in doing this. Um, I do have some thank yous uh, to begin with before I make you know, a few comments. Um, first of all, uh, obviously, I need to, to, uh, to thank uh, the people that helped me organize this meeting. Um, let me start with the, uh, the incredible support that I got in developing this from the NIH. Um, uh, Nancy, uh, Nazrin, uh, Christy, uh, Dan Retrosen, um, and the NIH, of course, as an institution. Um, supports our research and supports these sorts of educational efforts that I think are transformational and, and critical to getting the, to, to changing and, and, and keeping us on the cutting edge of what's going on. So anyway, thank you very much to, to the NIH for, for this kind of support. And this is now the third time that we've done it every other year. Um, I want to thank Harriet Griffin, who specifically at, at the NIH was the one who made most of, the, of your travel arrangements. I hope that, that, that worked out. I hope everybody traveled well. At least the weather cooperated in that regard. Um, Sarah Beth of BL Seaman, also I think you guys interacted with a lot during your travel, and I want to thank her especially. Uh, it'd be crazy not to thank the people that, on my end that helped. Uh, let me start first and foremost with uh, Kathy Luna. I don't know where Kathy is. She's your, uh, she's been your uh, liaison. I'm sure you've had more than your share of emails from her. I, I can't imagine even thinking about doing this without Kathy's incredible support. Uh, and she's worked overtime uh, for uh, all of us for this uh, symposium, so I, I can't thank her enough. But also some of the people in my lab that stepped up, uh, Kiyomi Komori, Katie Pachavalova, uh, Sarah LaMare, Sonal Kurian, um, you know, that just chipped in to do things as dumb as uh, stuffing uh, your, your name tags. And, Okay, so briefly, um, why are we here in, in a few minutes? Um, when we, when I the first, did the first symposium, it really, I didn't have any big idea about where it should go, but I did feel um, that at the time, uh, the next big changes in, in how we would do research would come out of genomics, uh, genetics, uh, and proteomics. And that there had to be a better way to communicate that, to bring experts from outside of transplantation to fertilize experts within transplantation, to, to show us how technologies were being used in their disciplines, and then allow anyone in the room to consider how those technologies might be used to answer transplant questions. Um, and at the end of it, we, had done, we did a session on proteomics, we did a session on genomics, and we did a session on uh, genetics, we had some discussions about where biopsies might go. Bob Colvin gave this interesting talk about um, the steam roller and the competition, but uh, there's an old story about that. He did a much better job than I will, so I I'll give up. But it was just a, it was interesting, the idea that maybe someday we would, you know, this is only what, this was six, a little over six years ago, whether we would use genomic profiling uh, for uh, histology. Um, and how that would relate to the way we practice medicine in terms of something as simple as the traditional light microscope. So those are the kinds of things we talked about originally, and we ended up talking about genetics on the last day. And at the time, we were talking about sort of how you would do a GWAS study in transplantation, a uh, genome-wide association study, uh, and uh, we talked a little bit about uh, early uh, sequencing. We had someone, uh, Sarah Murray, came from Illumina and talked at, at the time. Now Sarah is with, uh, well, the next speaker, uh, who I'll get to in a second, uh, at the Scripps Translational Science Institute. So anyway, that was kind of the end of that, and we said, you know, this was, uh, everybody thought it was an interesting thing, we would do it again. So here we are, just, I just want to point this in context, you know, so six years later, um, there's now a uh, international society meeting on transplantomics. Um, so that's pretty far from, hey, I think maybe there'll be some genomics in the future of transplantation to this. Um, and I, I understand Mike Abacasis is here. He just flew in. I think Rong Chen is here. He just flew in from it. And I heard it was just an absolutely terrific meeting in Barcelona again. This is the second one they've done. 
Um, and, they're in, and these are meetings that, it, it's very different than this meeting, it's not, I'm not competing with them. This is a, uh, th what they're doing is, it, it, what's amazing is we now have a yearly international meeting where people, transplant people, are doing the genomics that we're talking about um, six years ago. Uh, in the, and, and it's, now we're assuming that there will be a genomic marker set for, that will complement uh, light histology. We're assuming that you'll, there'll be biomarkers. All right, we're all a little skeptical about whether, when exactly we'll run upstairs at the next patient and order a biomarker. We're a little skeptical about whether we'll never biopsy anyone again or biopsy them only sometimes. That's okay, you know, there's lots of things to still figure out. And we're even maybe not totally sure whether they'll be proteomic or genetic or plasma or urine biomarkers, but man, there's been a lot of progress uh, from the time when uh, basically I got up in, in the international meetings and was talking about our first data on peripheral blood lymphocytes for acute rejection and, you know, some of my good friends were getting up and saying, that's ridiculous, you'll never be able to do that, there's so many changes and blah, blah, blah. And then we're seeing just beautiful work from like Barbara uh, Murphy yesterday um, in uh, patients at three months and she's like showing beautiful correlations and biopsies and, and blood um, that, are that she's beginning to show are predictive. So, I, you know, I think the field has gone a long way. And why, so where does that put today? So, you know, the, the only thing that doesn't change is that technology doesn't change. I mean, this is a, it's like a runaway train. Every year, the technology that was the cutting edge is no longer the cutting edge, and yet the next level of instrumentation becomes available, the next technologies get enabled. And so what happens is you have technology being developed in response to these fields, and it's getting now incredibly competitive because everybody gets the idea that genomics is going to change the way we practice. And I think the next speaker is going to talk about that in a way that, that uh, you know, I'm really looking forward to hearing. And so what's this meeting about? What this meeting's about is to say, okay, fine, what you, what you can go to transplantomics meeting at, at the international meeting is about what we're doing in transplantation today, and that's fantastic. What I want to talk about today, as I tried to do six years ago and four years ago, is why, what are the technologies, what are the kind of areas that you might hope to hear in the transplantomics meeting three, four, five, six years from now. So that's one objective here. Um, another objective here is that there's two different kinds of people here today. Some are program leaders and others are basic scientists and then of course there's blends of the two and that's a good thing. One of the things I want you to do is to be able to sit here and go, you know, that was interesting but nah, you know, and that was interesting but nah, and then that. Now that really interests me and here's the partners and this would be a kind of technology. And honestly, guys, from the institutions, the prestigious institutions that all of you come from, you can reach out and find these technologies in your institution. They'll be in places you might normally not look, but they're there. And if they're not, there are people here today who can probably help you point you in the right directions or even be your new collaborators. So I think that's what I want you to be listening to. As the program leaders, you should be asking, where do I want to steer my young people? Where do I want to steal, steer resources in my institute? Maybe who's my next hire? For the people who are actually wanting to do the research, you should be asking, how could I use that? What kind of questions? And the last thing is, Peter Heger came up to me yesterday after I, I talked a little bit at the CTOT Mechanistic Committee meeting, and he said something that I'm taking to heart, and he says, look, you, know, you explain that, but what do we do with it? How, what samples do we need to do that? How do we answer questions? You, ha you know, it's, it's not that easy. Um, so what I will do today, as I've done in the last, is I will, I will be sort of ever present. I'm going to try and be your guide um, so that the individual speakers, none of whom except for me and Bruce McManus are even transplanters, um, I'll try and make those connections uh, for you. And of course, this is a nice venue. You can ask questions. Okay? So thank you all for coming.